Hello and welcome back. We've got a couple of trains running here. We've got the B17 with the LNER coaches on the inside line. And we've got the Patriot with the LMS Mark 1 coaches running around the outside. And we've got the Victoria in the station with the blood and custards. So we're going to move her away. So this is just me having an experiment to see how far I can get with the zero one and, and keep my sort of mind on what's going on. But it's complicated by trying to use the camera at the same time. So we're going to open that crossover at some point, but it's just trying to follow things around and get the timing right and remembering which controller's doing what at the moment with, in terms of controlling the locomotives. Slight pause there with the Patriot on the diamond crossing. I've been using the handheld. Gives a bit more flexibility to the running, being able to move around the railway a little bit. So there we're going to throw the points. I've just got to choose my moment carefully, otherwise we'll derail the LNER coaches. In here the click there. And then we'll chase the B17 onto the inside line. Now I do close those. I don't know whether you can hear the click. So we're not going to have a derailment. So we've got the Princess Victoria and the B-17 on the same line. I'm trying to get back, far enough back to get the tail end of that train in for you. Victoria keeps wanting to tear away. She's a, a little bit more sort of uh, enthusiastic. She's not as smooth on the controls as the other two models. Making a tremendous sound now. As those LMS coaches, they've got a slight pinkiness to them when you get them in the light. And here comes a Victoria, and we'll stop her there and we'll change the uh, points and get her onto the elevated section. Slight pause in the point work there. Remember to close those so the B-17 doesn't run straight into the back of the blood and custards. Storming around there and then let's see if we can get the Victoria to move off. And up the uh, incline she goes, making quite light work of those coaches. Stop her on the bridge. Patriot going under the girder bridge, B17 coming in from the left. Great looking model this. Crashing over the points. Patriot coming around now. It's nice running them along that long straight. The temptation is to uh, get them going rather quickly. And then we've got to stop the Victoria before the point at the bottom because uh, otherwise we're going to have a head-on collision. There we go, so that's uh, safe there. So I was just trying to wonder how far I could get everything around. But uh, we'll see where we get to. Yeah, that would have been nasty having those two head on, wouldn't it? Perhaps a nice bit of video, but a bit reckless with the models, perhaps. And now we'll stop the Patriot there and we'll get some points shifted so we can uh, get her into the station. There we go. So that's point number four, so we'll get into the station approach here. Smoothly through the curved point. And then over the diamond. But then it's definitely struggling there. So one point too many at that speed, perhaps. So there's still power in it. And it's just 
not quite enough to, to make it run across that point. I think it was definitely losing contact with the track there at some point, I think, perhaps. Into the station. Nice gentle stop at the end of the platform. And here comes the B-17. And we'll bring her to a stop just before the crossover onto the uh, station approach. Well, this is a, a few days later now, and I've got a few more things moved around on the layout. And I've got to, um, a local module installed in the um, in the mallard there, so I think we'll we'll get the mallard out. We'll get it across the turntable and uh, out onto the railway, and we'll pick up what are fast becoming my favourite coaches in the last uh, week or so. And these uh, old uh, trying um, maroon and cream or blood and custard coaches, which I'm, I've put those uh, uh, bogies in from the from the 80s. Uh, mentioned in a couple of videos back so I'll leave a link to those but let's see if we can get the get the mallard out so uh, we just need to get the right module selected locomotive sorry so we are number six so we want locomotive six enter and we want to run actually no let's use the handheld I'm being daft here so let's go um, clear just in case so forgive me for pausing and thinking about this so it's um, controller 3 locomotive 6 enter so we should be on the handheld now it is rather a nice thing to use it enables you to walk around the room a little bit more a little bit like the Morley it's quite nice to to be able to move around and move closer to things I'm just checking how much of this ribbon there is remaining there, so there isn't a great deal. Perhaps if I unhook it, unhook it, sorry, from the corner of this bench, we'll just have a, another few centimeters available. We'll just walk a little closer over here. So let's see how how well behaved the mallard is. A little bit juttery. It's the same thing with the slider on this, that um, it's quite a, sort of you have to anticipate the stop a little bit earlier than you might think. Let's see if we can get that to creep backwards just a fraction. It's quite a long model, as you can see. It's almost overhanging the far side of the, the turntable there. Let's see if I can inch that back. I think that's probably enough. So uh, remember I've got this, uh, turntable set up on one of those little motor controllers that can be had off the internet for a few pounds. So let's see if we can uh, get that rotated. Just getting a little bit closer to the model and have a look. I know we only saw this run just a short time ago. You can see the cable between the, the tender and the locomotive there. Almost there. There we go. Let's see if we can have a, a successful uh, move away from the, the turntable here. However, I just want to check on the points. I have become quite forgetful of which way the, the points are set. Um, as you saw in that last piece of video, it led to uh, uh, me having to pause a lot and think about it. And there was a little bit of an accident shortly after that. I had to anticipated shooting a little bit more but it didn't go as planned these things happen so let's see if we can get that to move off the turntable and there we go out onto the main line and then we'll shut number 18 so we want 18 and we want that to go closed to straight. And I think we need to open up six and can't quite see. 
number one, I think. So six is the crossover. So six, and we set that to curved. And then number one, we're gonna set that to curved. So we we'll change the locomotive to a reverse. I never had the handheld unit as a child or, or a slave. So it's a, a really, really very, very nice of the kind person who sent me this. It really is quite quite a revelation to con control this this equipment, being able to wander around a bit more. So let's uh, let's go backwards. And we'll stop just before the bridge, I think. Or just under the bridge, so we need to open what's gonna be now point number four and 25. Let's have a quick look at the, uh, the diagram over here. So locomotives sit in there at present. We need to come through there and there and pick up these blood and custards sitting in here. I think that's just four and 25. So we'll just uh, return to the keypad. So number four, open and 25, set for the sidings. So let's see if we can uh, back her through there. I'm just gonna step over this cable. Let's see if we can get ourselves a little bit closer. change we're down uh, an absolute crawl let's see if we can hook that up I think we just got that so I'm just gonna have a, a peer over the camera here yeah I think we've got that so let's, uh, let's change for forward so it is all just playing with trains I, I, I keep saying I'm having fun with this it's uh, it's been far more rewarding than when I was a child but uh, Definitely isn't smooth running, but uh, understanding why now is uh, probably easier to take on board. So let's uh, roll forward now. So it does stutter in it, that loss of signal to the chip or the module. And we'll just stop that there and we'll catch up with the point work. So I'm going to have to uh, rotate the other way around the room just to uh, unwind myself from the, uh, the ribbon cable, which is sort of sitting behind me there. So whilst I remember, we'll close four to straight and we'll do 25 whilst we're at it. And we also want to do yeah, let's leave one and six open. We'll open the elevated section, I think. So that's number 10. So we're not, we're not getting the point throwing there. Let me just try that again. There we go. I don't know whether you noticed that I was, I was pressing that in the wrong direction. I was pressing it to close and the point was already obviously set for straight. So if I now, if I set that again, it should, uh, I don't know whether we can get everything in shot there. That's straight. And I was just pressing it for straight and it was just a hum from the motor. So we'll, we'll leave that open. We shouldn't really keep throwing these repeatedly. And we want to open the tail end of the ele elevated section, which I believe is, and I can't remember, number two. So again, excuse the indecision. So there we go. and. The correct direction this time. And I have made a note, I know, I know we mentioned a video or so ago that the, the previous owner of this had written in there on, onto the plastic and I couldn't get that removed so in, in the end I've, I've copied this and put paper labels on so I've just updated this with the locomotives I've got uh, with, the, with the modules in and uh, I've also I've done the very same to the one on the bench should I have to uh, work on the models over there which it does happen or has happened from time to time, so it's uh, sort of 
semi-seamless, shall we say. So let's give that some power and we'll, we'll go up and over. So we'll, we'll see if we can get in a little closer. We'll flip the camera around. And let's see if we can get on the move. I think I mentioned before, they don't have quite as much pulling power on these modules as they do running off the traditional controller, but not having too many issues with that. Lovely looking model. And I'm gonna bring this up to the top here and bring it to a stop. Again, it takes ages to stop. And for another reason is I, I do need to unwind myself from this uh, ribbon cable again, otherwise I'm gonna trip over. So obviously, I think if you were using this without making video, you wouldn't have to keep turning around because you would naturally probably just keep uh, unwinding yourself. But with the camera, it becomes an issue. So let's give that a little power and we'll, we'll drop down. And it does run away. doesn't have that same held back feeling that you get from the Morley controller. And we must remember to come to a stop. See if we can bring that down to crawl just before the point there. You can hear that creaking away. And stop. So again, I'm gonna unwind myself from the ribbon cable. So, so this is becoming a bit of a dance, this. So, and then we'll, we'll attend to the points now. So we want to close number one to straight, and number six while we're at it to straight. And number 10 to straight, as well as number two to straight. So it's great when you remember. Let's, let's have another charge around. Yeah, there's a point in the slider where the power comes away really, really rapidly and then you're down to the crawl. So let's, uh, I'm gonna unwind again. I do apologize about this. So the, 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 uh, the, the trailing leads on the, on the Morley controller, I think they're five meters, but you, you still end up getting them tied up around your feet. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of a crawl off this. If I swing this camera around again, we'll, we'll get in tight and we'll have a, have a look. It's beginning to get quite heavy in the hand here. So that's about there on the controller. And we'll give it a little bit more. Probably heading for a stall on these points, I imagine. Let's give it a little bit more. There, it stepped up a little bit more. See if we can get the tender all the way over. That's pretty good. Let's give that, a, I'll give that a little bit more. And a little bit more. Doesn't like that point. So I'm gonna give that a little bit more now. There's a little bit of a delayed reaction. Let's 
see what sort of stutter I get out of that. So it all comes away quite, quite rapidly. that there let's let's give it a go backwards see how that valve gear does so this is model r350 the mallard my version came along from 79 it's got a, a paint not sorry it hasn't got a paint finish sorry the the model 309 i think came along in 1980 had a painted finish i think uh, mine is just self-colored plastic with the bands and the, the black paint work i think there we go. Again, we, I think we had a good look at it in a, in a video a little bit earlier. Let's see if we can just stop that there. And you, you can see the wiring between the two. I'll put a couple of insert pictures in there. You can see the, how the module has been attached or uh, hooked up. So it's all fairly basic stuff. But I think if we uh, right this camera now, put it the other way around, before I drop it, it gets really heavy and we'll put the controller down. We'll just have a quick glance at the uh, 82 catalog, at the, uh, the extra bits in the, in the system which will be coming available. It's be tragic to drop that. I need to get a hook for that. So uh, I think I mentioned earlier, it's quite difficult without the, um, the lever frame switches to see which way we've got the points um, set. Although I can't, uh, Hand on heart, say I always remembered which way the points were, even when looking, but uh, it was a great deal easier. Let me see if we can find the, uh, the Zero One equipment in here. Here we go. There's quite a lot devoted to it in the uh, 82 catalog. Let's just have a quick glance at the, uh, the cover there. Let's see if we can get that without glare. There we go, 28th edition, 1982. It seems to be quite a break from the uh, earlier style of catalogs. Definitely upright, upright as well. I can't remember. Actually, the one before this was upright as well, wasn't it? With that wonderful pencil illustration on the front. Um, actually, it might be worth just grabbing that one. Let's, let's see if I can. Uh, I was looking at that one. Let's see if I can get this out of the, the packet one handed. Terribly planned. So the the control unit, which was brought along for controlling the point work, or the, for displaying the point work, the, uh, let's see if we can get this. I really should have marked this and I haven't, excuse me, while we just flick through here, see if we can find, no, I thought it was at the back. I might have to cut away from this and come back. Let's give it one more go. There's the price list. We will find zero one in a second. Here we go. There's a zero one equipment there. So phase one, phase two for the accessory controls, but phase three announced here. So the, uh, the micro mimic display system available automate one. And they picture it like this as a like a plug-in unit which would have gone alongside the master unit but i think what what eventually arrived was this type of unit which sits on top of the master unit in place where the lever frame switches would have gone here and uh, there's these display boards and it requires quite a lot of components to sort of i had semi thought about it but it requires just finding so many bits and pieces and i, I think i've read somewhere that there's a there's a problem with a is, a, is there a battery that needs to be reinstalled or changed in here which can cause problems? But uh, I haven't done that much research, but the, um, the number of components required for uh, illuminating all of this uh, display board is, is quite extensive. You need many, many of these. So we've got 32 points on here. I mean, that was 12 modules on there, so I think we're, we're into a minimum of 12 of these. Um, 
12 of these, no, no, not 12 of these, so I've got 32 points. So it's a, a considerable number. And again, these display boards to properly re represent the layout or, or two halves of the layout perhaps, rather than representing it all in one, would be quite a feat. And there is a, you've got these modules within the, the display modules. So it, it's quite a nice idea, but I think possibly it's a, a step too far in this instance, but I just thought we'd have a, a quick look at that. And there is these um, accessory modules wired up for making two points run together, so you're using the two modules, and then you've got a point plus a signal thrown together. So it's sort of semi-flexible. Now we see we've got the, these plugged in like that, and the, uh, the handheld at the end. And there is one of the modules, R955, I think this is the later variant. And there was a version earlier, we just had one of these items on it. I believe was uh, slightly more problematic. I have had a couple of them, and I think one of them has definitely stopped working and I've replaced it with one of those. So, um, yeah. But again, thanks again for watching. It's um, hugely appreciated, so it is time to get the, uh, the locomotive on the move again. Let's, let's give it a bit more power and we'll uh, go once round. That feels like a nice sort of sensible speed. Into that curve again, past the signal box. Let's see if we can get above it. see if I can stay above that. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye now.